I am Mr. Anderson, the Executive Director of the African American Male Institute. Have everybody enjoyed their first two weeks here on campus? Well, I'd like to welcome all the freshmen. I hope you have gotten acclimated to being on campus. And all the returning students, I hope you learned from last year and will do better this year. Our program, the African American Male Institute, give programs each semester and we do it campus-wide. So today is our first program. We met one day last week on Tuesday, and these young men have put together a wonderful program. So we are going to go by the program, just sit back and relax. We're only gonna spend just a small portion of your time and enjoy it. Good evening and welcome. My name is Juwan Arthur, the first semester freshman member of GSW AAEMI program. And I would like to welcome all students, faculty, staff, alumni, and community members and friends for supporting the program. The main goal of our AAEMI program is to re recruit, educate, retain, and graduate African American males that attend any college or university in Georgia. AAEMI also provides programming that will enlighten pro program participants to become graduates that are contributing citizens in our community, our state, and our nation. The success of the AAEMI and its mission will provide for a better overall educational experience for all GSW students, faculty, and staff. Our motto is to is academic excellence and social responsibility. Again, welcome and enjoy the program. Good afternoon. My name is Chris James, a first year freshman member of the Georgia Southwestern AAMI program. I'm excited to be here at Georgia Southwestern to further my education. I've been here for two weeks and AAMI already has made me publicly speaking at a campus-wide AAMI event. That's because AAMI expects its members to become well-rounded students and graduate. Also, I have enjoyed my newfound friends, my classes, and my instructors. Being a member of AAMI has taught me that I truly am the one responsible for my education with the guidance and teachings of my professors. My education and my goal of graduating is the most important thing in my life right now, and I accept that respons responsibility with dedication. I surely will be tested by my professors academically, but the test that I will face outside of the classroom in general are tests that will determine my character and my overall success. With the motivation and leadership of the African American Male Institute, I have the nurturing to make this academic year one of, one of success and enlightenment. I am determined to fulfill the motto of AAMI, academic excellence and social responsibility. Thank you. Our speaker for today is an educator and head boys basketball coach at the American Sumter High School. He received a BS in education from Georgia Southwestern State University and his master's in teacher leadership from Ashford University. After his graduation from Georgia Southwestern, he was employed with Procter & Gamble in Albany, Georgia. In 2007, he took an opportunity to achieve his goal of becoming an educator and coach. He is entering his 10th year in education. On his journey, he has taught and coached in Moultrie, Albany, Atlanta, and Cuthbert, Georgia. During his time at Georgia Southwestern, he took part in many college clubs and organizations and events. Most notably, he is a member of the Lethal Lambda Psi chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated and was a member of the Georgia Southwestern men's basketball team. His experience with Kane's uh, basketball program prepared him well in his coaching career. In 1993 through 1994 seasons, the Canes compiled a 24-10 record, 
won the conference title and made it to the Sweet 16 of the NAIA National Tournament. In the following year, the Canes went 30-5, to won the conference title, and made it to the Elite Eight on, of the NAIA National Tournament. After four years of being a head coach, he compiled an 81-34 record. He was two region champ he has two region championships, one region tournament championship, one runner up tournament championship, one sweet sixteen, and two elite eight state tournament appearances. Through his teaching and coaching, he has mentored many students while helping them grow as individuals, as well as acquire scholarships academically and athletically. It is his drive and passion to always help others achieve in any endeavor they choose. He is married and has six kids. Alex, Corey, Haley, Chris, Matthew, and Madison. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our speaker for today a warm hurricane welcome, Mr. Alonzo Hocow. All right, good afternoon. Now, I'm not gonna keep you long, because uh, I myself was a co college kid, and I understand there's free food available, and I know, one, I'm here for that, <laughs> all right? And I know, two, you got somewhere else you got to be. But I do wanna, you know, uh, tell you a little bit about my uh, college experience here at Southwestern, all right? So bear with me a little bit. I'm gonna get you, uh, give you some free game. That's what y'all young folks say, right? Put you up on game, all right? Put you up on some game. I just want to start off by saying thanks to Mr. Anderson and uh, Georgia Southwestern for allowing me to come back and speak to you. It's always good to come back, but it's also uh, extra good to come back in this capacity to be able to share some of my information and experiences uh, here at Southwestern. Now, I see we got a new basketball coach here, Coach Hicks. Give him a round of applause. I met Coach Hicks some time, some time ago in Columbus. He probably don't even remember. I was coaching at Randolph and we kind of sat down and chatted a little bit. Great guy, great coach, and he's going to do well here. But I got to tell you, in the meantime and in between time, you're looking at one of the best that was right here on this campus. <laughs> Ms. Anderson know about that. Uh, trust me, I was just part of a very good team. I was part of a very good team, and as the introduction stated, uh, we had some good success as far as making national tournament runs with Elite Eight and uh, Sweet 16 uh, appearances. All right. uh, the teams I was a part of were, were phenomenal. We were pretty much stacked. The guy recruited very well. Uh, we had 12 guys that could pretty much start no matter where they went in the conference. All right. And a few of them, we, uh, we, we started off with uh, Dwayne Harper, which was a point guard. He was being scouted by NBA teams. Uh, Eric Taylor, which was like a five-foot guard uh, that weighed about 250. Uh, I don't know if you can sit there and make the, the, the analytics on that and, and, and structure and height, but uh, to, to kind of give you a little synopsis of it, every tournament or every game that we went to, people had donuts. Say, Eric, you want one? We got something for you to eat. He was joking on him because he was a short guy and he was like a little roly-poly, but he could shoot it. <laughs> he could shoot it better than Steph Curry. I know a lot of y'all know about Steph Curry, right? Go to State Warriors? No? Yeah, okay, we got my guy, he's with me. All right, so uh, we had a tenacity and a grit that made us want to annihilate our opponents. Uh, we sharpened our skill set daily and practiced against each other, and we practiced so hard and pushed each other so hard that our games were actually a walk in the park. Uh, we looked forward to games because it was a much needed uh, break from the warfare practice. I can remember waking up sometimes at night just being sore uh, from practice and, and athletics wasn't like it was back in the, you know, like it is today where you get an ice bath and all that. You just had to grit and bear it. If you were hurting, uh, coach don't want to hear it. If you want to act like you hurt, you're not going to play. If you don't want to play, I mean, that's what we're here for. So it was a different experience. Uh, me, Dwayne, and Eric, we kind of led the team as far as scoring going, but we, we was comprised of a bunch of other characters. Uh, we had uh, Corey Davis and Marcus Jackson were some leaders, uh, senior leaders on that team, and they were excellent. Roy Moody was a shooter that was sparkers off the bench. Uh, we had Charles Howard, which was a slasher and shooter, and he could defend anybody and shut them down. 
Uh, we had Damon Big Dog Davis, Radovan Ilik from uh, Serbia, and Michael Francis. There were some big guys in the paint, uh, around about 6'8", uh, 250 to 6'10". So there were some, uh, there were some bears. But we were a team, most of, uh, you know, we were a team, and everybody knew that. Everybody understood their job, and we played our role. In 94 and 95, that was our, uh, my second year here. And that first year, we went to the, the Sweet 16. Uh, we won the first game, took it to the next uh, team, and, they, and they, they handed our butts to us. All right. So it was a good experience. So the next year, we came back, we had a 30 and 5 record. Uh, and we had an awesome team that year also. Uh, we made it to the Elite Eight, and we lost to the team that actually won the championship that year. Now, I've done my research on that, and uh, the website only has from 90 and 91 for all sports, but from my research, from what I know, that pretty much says that I was part of one of the best sports teams here at Georgia Southwestern. Is that right, Mr. Anderson? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, good deal. Good deal. He was at all the games. He was at all the games. He comes to, uh, to some of my high school games. He loves basketball. Great guy. All right. So as, as doing the research for this, uh, coming to talk to you all about basketball, it, 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 I enjoyed the walk down memory lane. It allowed me to talk to some of my uh, uh, buddies from uh, college. I called them, talked to them. Uh, let them know I was going to be coming up here and talking to a few students. And so it was, it was kind of fun. Kind of fun. And I, I talked to my old coach. Coach Brown was an assistant coach at the time. And he, uh, I remember one time he told us, he said, Hoss, that's what he used to call me. My name is Huff Pop, but he called me Hoss. He said, you know, I told y'all that the moments that you shared on this campus and as a part of a team you'll, you'll carry throughout a lifetime and y'all gonna always be friends. And, uh, you know, a lot of the memories we had from uh, practices, games, road trips, and uh, in college, it, it, it has. It carried me through life. And it's going to do the same thing for you. Uh, Southwestern holds a special place in my heart, not only because of the team and my accomplishments, but because of its impact it had. I, away from basketball, I enjoy college life. I've established many friends. And that is what the college experience is all about. A lot of you are all freshmen, and, and you're just coming into meeting brand new people. And, and that's what it's all about, meeting new people, getting out, uh, getting out of your comfort zone and, and, and growing and evolving and maturing. There are so many other extra uh, things that you can do as far as uh, extracurricular opportunities that uh, college provides to enlighten the experience, but always hold fast for your uh, true reason and purpose for being here, and that's to graduate. I've known many guys, many people that participated in uh, spades games, and they were a heck of a, uh, they could shoot some pool, and uh, but they lost focus on what you're supposed to be here for. And that's to learn, get educated, grow, mature, graduate, and move on with life. So always stay focused and understand what you're here for. Know your purpose. As an educator, I tell my high school students that this is the last four years that someone is required to look after you, feed you, clothe you, and provide all of your needs. Well, in college, this is uh, uh, your first true strike at independence. First time to, uh, to be by yourself, and you know you're setting yourself up for future and your future success. It's a chance to reinvent yourself, no matter where you're coming from. You can reinvent yourself. Nobody knows your past. Nobody knows anything about your high school experiences. Nobody knows you walked out in front of the gym for graduation, trip fail, your pants came down, and everybody pointed and laughed. Nobody has it unless it's on YouTube, it's different. Right. So it's a time to reinvent yourself. But it's also a chance to build your knowledge, enhance your capacity to be a critical thinker. Basically, you get ready to feel the power of your engine and the control of your own steering wheel. No one is managing your time, you are your own leader. And when you are your own leader, every decision and the result or consequence of your decision uh, falls in your lap. Some of you may be freshmen and just experiencing this. I remember when I was getting dropped off, it was a cool thing. There's nobody telling me, hey, Mike, go to bed, dogs. Son, get in the room. Go to sleep, you got school. It, it was, after about the first week, it was, it was kind of cool. I was like, hey, man, nobody around here telling me. But after a while, I would hear that voice. It took a while, but I would still hear mom say, hey, well, get your butt in bed. Dad, son, time to go to bed. 
So uh, it, even though you have that freedom, a lot of the stuff that you come from, uh, your parents are, is going to still be instilled in you, and that stuff is going to ground you and carry you throughout uh, your college days. Southwestern is still a blanket of security for you in certain ways because it is such a small knit community. And even with enrollment being up, it, it's still a small uh, community feel to the university. All right? And that's that kind of stuff that's going to help you and enhance your experience here. I got to know a lot of my professors and other faculty in which they made me feel like I mattered to them because they were always willing to help and to talk. I enjoyed conversations with them about life in general. They were very accessible, and that's always cool. This is uh, how well this university will treat you, so take advantage of it. Now, if anyone, anyone wanted to be a career college student, that would be me. I love college. I tell my ball players, I got Adam in here. I don't know Adam on the spotlight on him. Played for me in high school. Phenomenal player. I tell them all the time, man, college is your best experience. I enjoy it. I still miss it. We still talk about it. When we get together, all our buddies, we talk about all the good times we had, how much fun we had. All right, it's the best experience that you can have. If, if my parents were in a, in a uh, you know, they were able to sit there and say, son, stay in college as long as you want, trust me, I would have been that guy. I would have been him. All right, I enjoyed it. It was fun. But with that, you know, you, uh, you got to move on. All right? So with that, there are some things that I personally believe that you should obtain from the holistic experience of the college experience, all right? And these are going to be, this is your free game I'm giving you right here. So get ready. This is stuff you probably heard before. There's nothing complicated about it, all right? Among the usual of set goals, priorities, and manage your time, there's also get experience, all right? There are many groups and organiza organizations on campus in the community. Join them, be active, get out and meet people. Uh, I joined Cap Alpha Psi in my college days, and through the fraternity, organizing, volunteering, and mentoring uh, was an excellent way for me to develop my skills to be in the, in the, in, uh, effective in my field of education and coaching. All right, find your passion or purpose. What drives you? You're smart. You, you may start out to be an accountant, but find out that it's not what you really want to do. It's okay to switch it up, but don't wait too late. Don't wait too late. And there's some people that go on to be accountants, uh, study in one field and move to another. It's okay because we all grow and we evolve and we find different things that's important to us and, and we can still choose and, and, and find our path and, and move on that way. But they also say find your passion and, and you'll never work a day in your life. I know I found mine. Right? Being an educator, being a coach is one thing. It's not always going to be the, the, the value that you find uh, monetarily. But I get passion from helping young people grow. I, I, it gives me a, a sense of purpose, and a, it, it wakes me up every morning. I got to drive. I'm up at 5 o'clock in the morning, get me a mile jog, and I'm off to work. I don't leave Americas till probably around 7.30, 7.45. So I, I'm, I'm here pretty much all the time providing not just for ball players, but for every student. I run out of school program. Uh, I mentor, I do everything I can, but it's that drive and that purpose that keeps me going. So find yours, whatever it may be. Also develop an entrepreneurial spirit. This, this here is, is, is golden age right here with social media and all this other stuff that y'all can do. You know, uh, develop your strengths, ideas, and uh, desires and turn, them, and turn them into something that can be profitable for you. Uh, I have a fraternity brother that graduated right here from Georgia Southwestern. He started right here with event planning and everything, and now he owns his own business and flies pretty much all around the world doing just that. All right? So find out what your, uh, your spirit is and, and put your ideas to use. Use your resources. Right now you have so many brilliant people right here on campus that are here for free to help encourage you and help bring your goals to fruition. All right, most educated, educators or professors here, they know way more than you do, and they were all willing to help you for free. Now, once you graduate, every little bit of help you want to get is going to cost you. So use those resources that you have here. Network. Get out and know people from professors, fellow students, and professionals in the community. The relationships you develop in college will last a lifetime and will assist you later, later on in life. I network with a bunch of people coming from uh, college, 
it, it helped me out in a time of need. Uh, being a head coach or being a coach these days, uh, it, you know, it, it's cutthroat. I was fired one time from coaching. I didn't have a job. I got a call from somebody I knew from college that I knew him that we weren't real tight buddies. They said, hey, Mike, man, I heard you, you know, you, you need, a, need a job. Come on up here, interview with me in Atlanta. That's how I got, uh, went to Atlanta and got a job. That's just from networking, being a, a good person and talking and meeting people. All right, be humble. There's nothing new under the sun. Although you may think you're the baddest, the greatest, the smartest, or whatever, it's already been done. And there's somebody that can tell you how to do it better. So be humble. And keep your mind open to new, keep your mind open to new ideas, thoughts, and opinions. Also, enhance your social political views. Uh, the world is changing. There's a lot going on now with the election. Uh, don't have these four years where you lose touch of everything going on outside the world because you're so engulfed in what's going on here. All right? You have been taught to see things uh, through your, your parents, uh, your past experiences. And no matter what socioeconomic background you may come from, I challenge you to dig deeper and seek a, a deeper understanding for the greater of humanity. All right? Don't just seek like minds. Find somebody different than you, somebody that has an opposing view, and then create dialogue. Don't get stuck in your own little box. And never quit. College is a challenge from the financial side all the way down to classroom. All right? You're here because you want to be and you know this is an excellent opportunity to set you up for life. You will undoubtedly have challenges, but never quit. My coach had a picture up in his, in his office and that always stuck with me. And I, I got it up in my locker room now. I had a product in the test to that. It's a picture, and you've probably seen it before. It's a crane that then went down in the pond, grabbed a frog, and trying to eat it. But the frog is stuck in the crane's mouth, but he has his arm out, and he got his hand around that crane's throat, Never quit. And that's all it says in the Bible is never quit. All right? You're not going to eat me, so you're going to either let me go or you're going to die. But he has a never quit attitude, and uh, that kind of was what our coach was, and that's what he built in us. All right? So, of course, you're going to always have adversity, but never quit. Uh, keep grinding, and something will always break. Now, those are a few little things that I found that uh, helped me through life and it'll also help you. And I want to remind you that you are at the right university. You made the right choice. The two basketball teams I spoke of before embodies the spirit of what it takes to be a hurricane. You will find that Southwestern is a team, a team of faculty and staff that are here to coach, support, and guide you. But you must do your part. You must do your job. Please understand that this is your grind time. So what does it take to be a good hurricane? It takes work ethic, perseverance, a never quit attitude, and ultimately achievement. For many of the hurricanes I know are now excelling in the field, in their field of dreams. They are sprinkled all over the country and abroad, doing great work, and sharing many of the lessons, memories, and relationships that began right here at Georgia Southwestern. I stand before you a proud man, proud of my university, and a better man because of my university. And being here at this institution has played a tremendous role in that. It has given me the strength to continue to learn and to lead on my journey through life. And I hope that I've given you something that will help guide you on your journey. Thank you for listening. workshops throughout the year, not only its members for the overall education, for all members of the GSW family. 
Again, we'd like to say thank you, and we're looking forward to your participation in other AAMI events. As we leave, please exit the door to the left, and then you will re-enter on the right for a, a small reception. Thank you.